Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 40 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I have, uh, good news, we've updated to version 6 of the mod pack. I actually waited a few days after the mod pack came out just to make sure everything was smooth and, and running alright. Uh, it looks like it's good though, so finally bit the bullet and updated so uh i've got some new cool stuff to show you um also want to go into just a few things um so let's see what's new in the pack well we've got the modular power suits mod so uh you can see there's a whole bunch of uh modular power suits um we can build some power suits in here somewhere yeah there we go cool modular power suits we're gonna have to check those things out because they are pretty awesome uh aside from modular power suits we also got thomic bees uh the beast bees these guys are pretty neat because it allows you uh to have some magic based um bee stuff going on so you can have bees that do all kinds of cool stuff and interact with uh thomcraft uh i've done a lot with bees the last couple episodes so i'm going to take a break from them and work on some other things but i do want to get you caught up on where we're at with them so let's see how I've been making out with both bees and trees. Uh, I think I left you guys last episode having a purebred imperial queen. Well, I definitely did, and she's doing rather well. I also got myself a purebred industrious queen. This is uh, further up the diligent line. I can go ahead and show you this right here real quick. So you can see here that the uh, industrious line, I think I started with diligence and then uh, I basically did exactly what I was hoping I'd be able to do. Just leave them in this apiary here with my auto run program going. And it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It kept running and it got them up to industrious. How cool is that? And then from there, uh, you know, we've been getting a, a bunch of stuff going on in our centrifuge and squeezers and I actually had to make a quick and minor alteration. Also, why is there stuff on the ground here? Let's see. Let's open up this interface. Why? There we go. Okay. So what we should be getting um, here is the following. White. Oh, that's why. Silky Propolis was going white. Okay. So we don't want anything going down the blue line here. I have to make a minor adjustment. Basically, items are going to come down here. I made this a diamond pipe instead of an iron pipe, which is what it was before, because we're starting to get pollen and royal jelly. What we want is for the pollen and royal jelly to go down the black line, continue along. And then over here, uh, we pretty much want um, Silky Propolis, which is... Uh, you know, this stuff, to go down the yellow path. We don't want anything to go up the blue, the white path because that's actually the output from the squeezer or from the centrifuge. So we want everything that's not, you know, cobblestone or silky propolis to actually go down the red line, which heads over to the chests there. So that's a quick build craft modification to my chest system. And you can see we're already starting to collect a good amount of pollen and royal jelly, which is good. We're going to need a lot of that stuff for our uh, extra bees and genetic manipulation stuff, which we're probably gonna get to in a couple episodes. And once we got all our um, bees in order, what I've been doing is working on my trees. So you can see here, I've got a grafter, which I've been uh, using a bit, and uh, I need to adjust my config because we just updated the mod pack, so we need to uh, you know, change some things here. We can leave that as an add, and we'll make this a minus, okay. Yeah, I know I don't use waypoints. Everybody always says, like, why don't you use waypoints, Darwolf? Well, I don't know. I kind of like not using waypoints. It makes me kind of remember where things are. All right, so remember, any trees nearby will cross-pollinate with each other whenever there's uh, the presence of a bee. And we actually got pretty lucky with this uh, over a period of time. Uh, you can see a bunch of leaves starting to change. And uh, what I've been doing is collecting them using the grafter. And uh, you have a random chance of getting something cool. In this case, for example, I got a silver lime sapling. This is a new type of tree it's a totally new species uh, you can see here when we analyze it um, it does some cool stuff right now it doesn't produce anything but that's okay because it's uh, one of the things I need to go down the line and get something really good you can see this is actually an example of a silver lime sapling it's this guy right here with this cool looking wood that's one of the trees I got and the other ones that you guys have already seen uh, for the most part were like this one here oh there's a cherry sapling that's cool hill cherry and this guy here looks like uh, we got from here a uh, apple oak sapling. So you basically need to look for the discolored leaves and go ahead and break them using your grafter. Now it looks like it's getting pretty late, so we're going to need to go to sleep. Ooh, what do we got here? This looks discolored a little bit. It looked discolored, didn't it? I'm just going to collect them real quick. 
I also want to see... Nope, that bug still exists. All right. Uh, so we got some mundane larches. We already had those, though. So there's nothing really too fancy there. So I actually set something up to um, work towards getting the trees that I want. Because remember, my problem has been a lack of seed oil. Uh, now in the newer versions of forestry, uh, seed oil production from seeds just ain't so hot. What's up, creepers? So what we're going to need to do is get ourselves some walnuts and chestnuts. And that's uh, a combination of the cherry tree and the, uh, the lime thingy that I was telling you about, the silver lime sapling. So I planted two silver lime trees here and two cherry trees. And I've got an auto-feeding um, apiary with some marshy queens. Real simple setup. Pretty much everything you've already seen me do before uh, in terms of auto-feeding the bees. So I felt I could do that off camera. And what we're waiting for now is a little bit of mutation. So let's see. I've got um, another piece of bronze here, which is good, because I noticed one little mutation spot so far, and that is this guy right here. So you can see the leaves are a different color, and what I'm hoping for is that these two trees mutating got me a chestnut sapling. Is it true? Could it be? Common walnut. Nice. That's what I'm looking for. Awesome. So we've got a common walnut sapling. However, you might have remembered from a couple episodes back when I found one in my chest, that guy, for example, common walnut and common walnut. Uh, we can even analyze this if we want, uh, common walnut, see? And these guys uh, produce walnuts, which is perfect. It's exactly what I want. Now, do they stack? No, I guess not. Okay, so well, I didn't mean to drop them. I'll come back here, you. So I've got two, but remember the walnuts have a girth of two by two. So when you plant them, you actually have to plant them in a two by two pattern, which means we're going to need two more walnut saplings before we can even think about planting these guys. Got it? All right. So we're going to let some of the uh, tree mutation happen kind of behind the scenes here. And I'll come back and check on these trees every now and then throughout this episode and the next one. You can also see the difference between ripened and unripened fruit right here because we've got some nice ripened cherries right next to some unripened cherries. So uh, in future episodes, we're going to set up a way to automatically harvest some of these awesome things. But for now, we're going to basically uh, hang tight and uh, wait for more mutations to occur. Hopefully, I'll get two more of those walnut saplings, and then we'll be ready to make some walnut trees. And that is where our real source of seed oil will come from. Cool? Now, for this episode, I'm kind of excited, and I'm ready to start playing with Mistcraft. Uh, the reason I've purposely avoided doing much with Mistcraft is because I knew there was a major change coming uh, by way of uh, Mistcraft and how it works. So uh, I wanted to wait until that change was implemented before I started, uh, you know, playing around and having fun with it. So really was looking forward to Mistcraft. Now I'm excited because it's finally here. So we're going to get to play with some of the new Mistcraft mechanics and we're gonna go have a little bit of an adventure traveling to some different dimensions. Sound like a plan? I thought so. So I'm gonna leave all my bees and all this stuff processing here in the overworld. You can see I've got some frames in some of these areas running really low on seed oil so I wasn't able to produce much of the frames and I'm gonna go start looking into Mistcraft and what it can do for us. Okay, so let's start checking that out. I think I should build a writing hut. And you know what, guys? Uh, just as I was sitting here thinking about how cool it would be to start working on some of the uh, Mistcraft stuff, it occurred to me that there's one resource that I really just don't have anywhere near enough stuff um, to uh, get started with. That is actually feathers. I am disturbingly low on feathers, and I think I've mentioned that once or twice by now already. So I'm going to go out into the wild here and see if I can't find any chickens, and uh, maybe even set up a quick farm to collect their eggs for a bit. What do you think? Sound like a good plan? Yeah, I thought so. So let's see, where are the chickens? I know there's some around here somewhere because I've seen them while I was out traveling in the past. Hmm, chickens, 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 where are you at? There's a chicken. Doing. Chickens. Sending them back to the pen. Haha, <laughs> that my friends is how you collect chickens. This chicken thought he was safe in water, but he was clearly not. All right, that seems like a decent amount of... Oh, there's more. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. Oh, good. They're hanging out back here. Exactly where I expected them to be, uh, of course. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is collect the um, chicken eggs, courtesy of this guy. Let's see. Where is uh, my wand of the apprentice? probably even go ahead and put some of this stuff away. I'm not going to need it for a bit. All right, magic wand. 
Let's pick up some guys. So I've got a decent amount of stuff at the moment by way of, yeah, a very full chest. Uh, gonna pull out some of this. Gonna throw the straw golem in there. He can kind of hang out. He's a smart golem. He'll enjoy being in that chest for a little while. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's just put these guys away. That works. Okay. So the straw golem can hang out in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave the wooden golem uh, here. I'm gonna replace, I think, this thing with a, with a wooden chest. And my plan here, of course, is um, for the chickens to lay some eggs. Hey, get out of there, you. Thank you. And for the golem to collect those eggs. Cool. So hopefully we'll come back in a little bit and find a chest full of eggs. Uh, however, for now, I need some feathers. There we go. Okay, cool. He was taking care of that. Good. Got a feather. That's the first thing I needed. All right, guys, what better place to do some writing in this nice little private room here that I've got set up? So uh, there's a couple things I'm going to need to place in this room just to make it, you know, kind of prepared uh, for the event of emergencies. So first off, I'm going to get a project table. Now, this is going to be a pretty important table because I want to get myself uh, just a few books in here. Not that many. Well, you know what? Let me just get as many books as I can for now. That's going to be enough. Cool. Uh, I'm going to actually get a little bit more paper by way of my uh, farm over here. Yeah, I know, the farm I disassembled. There we go. That should be several stacks of paper. That should be plenty. Cool. All right. Um, then what I'm going to set up is this nifty little contraption right here. We're going to need to get ourselves um, a writing desk. Now, it's pretty easy to make. We just need a feather and a glass bottle. Told you there was a reason I needed that feather, and now you know what it is. Cool. Writing desk, ready to roll. All right. So uh, now that we've got the writing desk, I'm just going to place it down right here. It looks like a nice spot. It's a two block, um, you know, block, I guess, you know, and uh, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on here. Don't worry, I'll explain how the writing desk works after I make for myself one more item and block from Mistcraft. Uh, this guy right here, the book binder, he's going to be important for binding books. Hmm, makes sense, doesn't it? Perfectly. Um, I also want an ender pouch. Cool. And uh, in there, I'm just going to toss a few uh, pieces of junk that I don't really need right now. You know, just happen to have on me and I can get rid of. All right. So uh, paper, some leather. We'll hang on to some of that stuff. Uh, this project table is actually going to be pretty important. It's going to create for me linking books. Remember, anytime you travel to a miscraft dimension, do not forget your linking book. I can't stress this enough. Linking books are your way back home to the overworld. If you travel to a miscraft dimension without a linking book, you are stuck. I mean, you can't get back. All right, there is one small and annoying way to get back, but it's not cool. And it's not dying either, because when you die in a miscraft dimension, you respawn at the spawn point in that dimension. So you cannot get back to the overworld by dying. The only way to get back to the overworld is occasionally in miscraft dimensions, there's a uh, portal that leads back to the overworld spawn point. Now, it just so happens I built relatively close to the spawn point in this world, so that's good. Um, you know, that's one option. Uh, and uh, that's about it. So. Your really only option is if you find your way into a miscraft dimension that you can't get out of is uh, keep jumping around to new dimensions and hopefully find one with a portal that leads back to the overworld. It's called a star fissure, and uh, they're not terribly common. Uh, the other option, uh, if you're really stuck and you want to cheat your way back to the overworld, uh, is to use the TPX command. You can uh, TPX and then issue the identifier for the age, and the age identifier for the overworld is zero. So typing the TPX zero command, you have to be an admin on your server, or have cheats enabled in your world, uh, and that will allow you to travel back to the overworld, of course. So that's the cheat way to get back. But I recommend, just don't forget the, the linking book. Trust me, it's really, really important. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cool stuff we're going to need. First off, I need a notebook, okay? Right there. That's my very first notebook. Probably going to have a few. Uh, in the notebook, you can store pages that you find. Now, pages can have different symbols on them, and the different symbols describe the different ages that you can create. Now, at this point, we haven't discovered any pages, so we have no way to write a book manually. But that's okay. I still create a notebook, and I still want to hang on to it just because I'm going to eventually need it. Next up, I need to get myself some ink, uh, some writing ink for that, uh, for that matter, and it is ink vial right here. Just going to need some water and two of uh, the ink dyes. Okay, I can manage that. Just need to find myself a water source real quick. 
One, two, three. Cool. Okay. Uh, with that, we can get some ink vials. So we're probably going to need a little bit more of uh, these ink sacks. But for now, we're getting ink vials. Cool. Awesome. Nice news is that they stack. And uh, you're going to want to place them over here on the right side. Boom. And you'll notice that it used up one of those ink vials. And it uh, went ahead and put all the ink into the writing desk. That's important. Cool. All right. Uh, so we've got the writing desk. We're ready to uh, do some writing. And then finally over here, we've got the book binder. Uh, this is where you're going to use some leather and some pages to bind together your books. Cool. So we're going to go over how to use both of these blocks in just a minute. But there's one more thing I think I should do just to be safe before I go traveling around different dimensions. And I am going to get ready with it right now. So what am I doing? Well, I'm making an uh, ender chest, of course. I'm uh, going to need a little bit of obsidian. Do I have any of that stuff laying around? If not, I have an easy way to get it. I think I can do it with spruce. hope I can do it with spruce. Yeah, I can. Nice. So uh, ender chest. Why am I bringing that? Well, remember, ender chests can uh, transport items across dimensions. So you can use an ender chest in one age to connect um, to another age. So what I'm going to build myself is an emergency supply kit. I want to have a couple extra linking books to the overworld and a couple other things so that if I ever do happen to get stuck in an age, I have an ender chest full of emergency supplies that will help me get out. That way, you know, if I forget, whatever. Okay. Uh, along with that, I want to make an ender pouch. So I'm going to need three pieces of leather, some blaze rods, an ender pearl. Not a big deal. I'm going to need a little bit more of this stuff. And, uh, you know, I've got some leather back in that area there. So let's do this. And what else did I need? Uh, one wool and two blaze rods. There we go. Cool. And I know where the uh, leather is. I left it back over this way. So I just need three pieces of that, and then I should be able to make an ender pouch. Let's see. I'll borrow some from this table here. And I'm going to throw my paper in here for the time being. Well, all right. I need a stack of paper to go uh, right here in the writing desk. There we go. Okay. Cool. That'll get me ready. But for now, get my ender pouch ready. Good. So now I've got uh, two white, white ender pouches. Now this guy, I'm actually going to place him right in this corner opposite this thing. Okay, and I'm going to color him red, 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 because I feel like that's a good emergency supply color. Cool. So now the uh, red coloring on the ender chest is separate from the white one. So you can see here I've got a white chest. It's not opening up. Um, if I shift right click on this guy, something like that. There we go. Red, red, red. Oh, that's the color I used for the lava sources between dimensions, isn't it? All right. Since I happen to have a black ink sack here, red, red, black will have to be the color. And shift right click. Boom. There we go. Red, red, black. Looks good. So in that chest, uh, I'm going to make myself a couple linking books here. I'm going to put two in the chest and keep one in my inventory. You'll note that as soon as you craft the linking book, it's going to link to the overworld. What that's actually Actually doing is it's linking both to the overworld's XY position, so exactly where I'm standing right here, plus it's going to indicate the uh, direction I'm facing. So when I link back using one of these books, I should be facing pretty much just like that, right in this dimension. Okay, so now I've got access to those guys through the ender pouch. I think I'm even going to throw like a stack or two of cobblestone in there, just a couple things, you know, like I said, in the event of emergency. Maybe get a few more goodies, you know, just to hang on to. Maybe some trees trees and some saplings. Yeah, that all sounds like some good emergency supplies, right? Just some stuff in the event, like I said, of an emergency. Cool. Uh, what else do we want to get going in here? I think maybe some dirt. You never know. You might need dirt. Trust me. There's some ages that uh, don't have anything in them, like at all. So I think that's a good emergency supply kit. I'm going to go ahead and put away some items. Now that we've got a pretty good setup, uh, I think I'm ready to start traveling and exploring some dimensions. What do you guys say? Let's do it. All right, guys, I think I've got everything I need. I actually increased the height of this room just a little bit. It was making a little too cramped in here for my style. All right, so I've got what I need, right? All right, so how do we go ahead and create a random age? Like I said, we don't have the resources at this point to create an age that we want to live in. We have no, you know, 
pages that we're going to need. So in order to get this going, it's really not too bad actually. I think we just got to drop a piece of paper into the book binder. So that's going to create what's actually called a blank page. You can see it's a page and it's uh, information here says that it's blank. And that gives us our very first descriptive book. It's going to use a piece of leather because uh, the book is bound in leather and we can name it um, the first age. That's the first age we're going to travel to. And technically what we're traveling to is another dimension, um, but in Mistcraft they're called ages. Uh, now I did actually want to grab a little something real quick before we grab that book. I need a little bit more wood. That'll do. Cool. Uh, so the very first age, we can travel there with just one page in it, and that's going to create a totally random age. And more often than not, I think it's almost guaranteed, to be honest with you, um, an age that is created randomly like that is uh, going to have something called instability in it, which is usually bad. You can see I'm also creating more book stands. You saw me make them in the past. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready to travel here. So I think the last thing I want to do is create a chest to store all my ages in. So for now, it's going to be a wooden chest. We can always go ahead and bump that up later. We can just stick that in the corner. Cool. And then we can create our traveling stand right here because what happens is most books when you click on them okay you can click on them with them on your right hand and you'll open up your linking book and you can see the name of the age here on the left and the uh, right hand side here the panel is where you can click on to travel then you can turn the pages and see all the pages that you added in we of course only added one blank page to this which is why there's only one page here you know there's the front page which always exists you can see the page numbers on the bottom one out of two page two is blank cool uh, but if we used that right here, the book would fall on the ground. It would, you know, fall out of our hand. The book doesn't come with us when we travel to an age. It stays in the dimension it's in. Uh, it's going to stay here, and it's going to fall on the ground, and it could get destroyed over a period of time. So we don't want that to happen. So you want to put your books on a book stand. And when they're in the book stand there, you can see it's ready to be uh, used and traveled to. So you're ready to check out the very first age? All right, let's do it. Here goes nothing. Right-clicking and creating an age. Oh boy. Now the first time you travel to an age, it's going to take a little time for that age to generate. But it looks like it did. Alright, what kind of trouble did we get ourselves into here? Oh, I hear thunder. And I've got some kind of negative particle effects going on here. If I take off my quantum suit helmet, is that going to... Alright, I don't know what's going on. Now remember, you want to keep a good hold on that link book to the overworld. It's your only way out. It definitely sounds like we've got some thunder here. And is it me or are there no stars at all in this age? Yeah, and we do have hunger. Okay, side effect of hunger. That's not the worst side effect in the world. I've seen worse. Uh, definitely looks to be nighttime. Uh, the moon's up in the sky. Looks like a pretty creepy and dangerous place. Now, always when you generate a new age, you're probably going to land on a little platform like this. It's a 5x5 five five platform. That's pretty much where you'll always land. Okay. So, I think I should go exploring this age a little bit. You can see it's dangerous. There's some enemies out here. No idea what kind of stuff we're going to find. But since I have a link book to the overworld, we should be okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, what's up, zombies? Oh, you guys all have the hunger effect, too. Haha. <laughs> All right, so like I said, a little creeped out by this age, but I'm going to go exploring and see what I can find. Hopefully I'll find something interesting. Um, you know, if I do find something interesting, I'll be back. Otherwise, um, you know, if I travel around for a little bit and don't find anything cool, well, then maybe we'll have to come and uh, create a new age. Sound like a plan? All right, I'll be back shortly. Ooh, now this is something interesting. Number one, we've got an Enderman here. We've got to kill him, because he's evil. It looks like we found a Thaumcraft dungeon. So don't forget, when you're in an age, uh, it, it has a world gen, just like normal, um, you know, stuff. So we did get a normal world gen uh, dungeon here. Oh, well, we've got some bad stuff happening already. Better light up this room to uh, ensure that no more bad guys spawn. You know, if I'm traveling around in a dangerous age, I should probably put on my quantum armor. I don't need to be uh, having any bat pack on, so let's get that going. There we go. Much more safe. Cool. Longcraft dungeon. I'll take it. An even evil villager. Haha. -ha. What do I get in here? Anything good? Thaumium sword. Nothing else too fancy. I don't want to clutter up my inventory with a few things. Ooh, a logic matrix program. I'm going to need that. Eh. A weak enchanted book, nothing too fancy. Ooh, knowledge fragments. We're definitely going to want to hang on to those. And uh, Thaumium, cool. Knowledge fragments are going to be used uh, in a future episode with uh, Thaumcraft and some cool stuff going on. All right, let's explore a little bit more through this age before I decide to call it quits and travel back to the overworld, because this hunger is really starting to become a nuisance. Um, ooh, we've got another little Thaumcraft dungeon here. This is cool. What is this? Ah, oh, it's a wisp. I was going to say, what's that weird thingy?
They're just as annoying in this dimension as they are in the overworld. Come here, Wisp. I only want to kill you. This is actually a really important finding that I just got. Um, it's some of the... What is that? Is that the sun rising? Okay, that must just be the sun rising. Okay, well that's good. At least it's not eternal night in this age. Uh, this is a uh, another type of Thaumcraft dungeon. This is really cool. Um, these uh, totems are going to be used for some stuff later on. I actually want to collect them here. And I don't want them to be destroyed, so creeper go away. There's also a chest here, which is nice, because... Uh, oh yeah, and there's usually... Ooh, cool music disc. Nice. Anything else important? Nah, nothing terrible. Alright, let me get rid of all these wisps here and I'll be back to collect this stuff. You're probably trying to figure out why there's so many wisps here in an age that I haven't done any magic in. It's because of this thing. It's an unstable node. It spawns a good amount of wisps and creates random flux in the environment all by itself. It's pretty nasty and annoying. It's uh, this thing right there. You can see it's got that little uh, whirlpool effect in the middle there. That's a bad node to be living near. Don't have one of those near your house. You'll want to move. Like I said, lots of wisps spawning from it. So go ahead and chop down this stuff, because like I said, it's pretty... I'm not going to say it's rare, but it, I think it was added to Mistcraft... Oh boy, another wisp. Nuisances. I think it was added to Mistcraft after um, the mod pack first came out. So this stuff won't be in the world right around your base. You'll have to go find either a new dimension or travel somewhere and create some new world gen. So trust me, you want to get your hands on this totem stuff. I'm going to uh, chop this down and then continue to look around this age. Because I'm betting there's some other cool stuff we found here. Now some ages are more unstable than others. So you're going to want to be careful um, where you're traveling. You could find ages with uh, much worse effects than just hunger. Even though this hunger thing is starting to become a nuisance, but yeah, what are you going to do? Alright, I'll be back in a few. Oh, now this is an interesting effect. You can see the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and assume there might be two moons in this age. Oh yeah, it's definitely a charged age. Yeah, wait, is that a second moon? Yeah, look at that. There's a moon, and there's a moon. So definitely two moons, and a charged age because there's lightning all over the place. Now I want to look around a little bit more. I'd really like to find some villages or something, but if I can't... Ooh, there's another one of those, uh cool places. I wanted to see if there's anything nice here that I might want to get. Uh, I already have a logic matrix programmer, thanks. Uh, I should actually be uh, extra safe and just transmit all the stuff that I want back to my sorting system in the overworld. Cool. So we'll go ahead and store all that stuff and that should run just fine. There we go. So that's all in the sorting system. Now I think my sorting system is backlogged because my uh, miscellaneous junk chest was full, but if it wasn't, rest assured that uh, it would still be going. Now what is this thing? Ooh, I think I found something that I was looking for. That's nice. All right, I think I just found a forbidden library, a forgotten library. Ooh, look at this. Oh, that's cool. This is a neat place. Right here we've got something very important. Uh, this is one of our first pages. You can see we get the oak wood page, okay? I think that's a modifier page, so that's pretty good. We're well on our way to getting some of our first pages. Mountainous desert biome. That sounds important. And mountain taiga biome. Cool. And if we wanted to, we could even grab these things. They're pretty nice. You can craft them if you want to. Uh, they're called lecterns, and you can put your books on them in much the same way that you put them on book stands. Neat. Now, I would like to just take a look here. Um, you know, there's this nice library here, and we've got all these books. It would be a shame to have them go to waste, right? Just want to look around and see if I'm not missing anything. Considering this is the first one of these things I found, and there's just so many books laying around, right? These would make a good source of uh, linking books back to the overworld. Well, 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 it would appear that my uh, digging through things has paid off because I just found myself a chest with, whoa, five pages in it. Oh, dude, that is awesome. That is really awesome. All right, let's, uh, let's store these in a very secure place. I'm going to put them in this little pouch right here. Let's see what kind of pages I just got out of this thing, because that is huge. All right, Ice Mountains biome, Shrubland biome. Ooh, the Normal Sun page. That's an important run. And uh, Crystals. That's a really important page. That is awesome. Crystals is going to come in handy very soon. All right, so that was uh, awesome. i got to find another one of these things, because they are cool. I'm going to look around this age a little bit more. I should let you guys know that those... Um, 
lost libraries or whatever you might want to call them only spawn in ages you won't find those in the overworld at all uh, so you got to travel to ages and look around and find uh, you know those cool things those uh, libraries uh, there is another way to get pages and we'll get into that pretty soon uh, but for now just keep in mind that's the best approach all right guys i've been running around like crazy for a little bit i'm running low on food didn't really find much else found another thomcraft dungeon or two I just want to check out what this is in the distance. I think that's just some more trees. Oh, well, there's something. Oh, that's a, that looks like a Thomcraft dungeon. I do not feel like going in there after I saw those bad guys hanging out. All right, so uh, no idea where I'm at, but that's okay because I've got a linking book right here. I'm going to go ahead and plant it down on a book stand. Now, if I come back to this age, it's going to be very unlikely for me to find this linking book back to the overworld. So, uh, I actually kind of liked this age. Boom! Hey, I showed right back up at my project table, as promised. Like I said, found a couple more Thaumcraft dungeons while I was there. Um, oh, good, I can eat and not starve. Cool. Uh, happened to come across some other goodies. Ran pretty low on uh, pretty much all my armor. You can see both my uh, quantum legs and boots are empty at this point. And if I had to guess, I would say my sorting system is backstuffed because this chest is full. Ah, that I guess. All right, so I'm gonna have to clean up that mess. Uh, but I got some music discs, which is cool. I've got a steadfast drone. That's an important B. And whoa, three stacks of books. Nice. All right, I will clean up here for a bit and come back in a few. All right, upgrading this guy to a diamond chest was probably the easiest way to go about getting what I wanted done. So we can just throw some of this. I'll put the thaumium stuff in here. And I'm going to kind of sort through some other stuff. Uh, got my lectern. Going to want to uh, probably throw my B over in the B room. Not a bad idea. Cool. Got to charge up my stuff. I'll be back in a few. All right, guys, we got to wrap up this episode in just a minute here, but uh, I did want to come by. Aw, that's not a good sapling. Hill cherry. Awful. Uh, wanted to come by, see if I got any more mutations in my trees. Doesn't look like I got more than that one, which was just unlucky. Uh, I do want to do a little bit more dimensional traveling, and I might do that between episodes. Why don't we create just one more new age? Uh, just because they're so fun. Uh, but what I do want to do is make sure I have a linking book on me. Uh, I'm going to make two of them real quick. And uh, I probably should have brought that stack or two of linking or of uh, normal books that we found in that library. Let's get those guys out. Cool. That looks good. Going to need to... Uh, that's an awesome library, by the way. I was really glad I found that extra chest, because that is going to mean a lot to me in the near future. Uh, I actually want to travel back to that first age for a moment um, and just plant a linking book at the um, landing site, which is right here. Uh, you can see I landed on that little platform. Uh, it's my opinion that it's always a good idea to plant a linking book home as soon as you enter an age. Uh, just, you know, put it somewhere safe, plant down the linking book. You can even build a house there if you wanted to, especially if you plan to stay here for any length of time. This is not a bad age, I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty solid one, to be honest. Uh, but I'm going to head back to the overworld. Oh, there we go. Something weird just happened. All right, I think I lost my linking book. That's okay. No biggie. Easy enough to hop back and forth. Sometimes uh, linking books like to get stuck on your cursor. There it is. Just right click. Uh, you can access the book while it's on the ground, uh, but you can click on this slot here to pick it up again. Cool. So there's a little tip on how you pick up your linking books to the overworld. All right, I do want to create, like I said, one more age. It's getting a little dark in here, so let's go ahead and lighten things up. I want to create one more age, just one. And then we got to wrap up because we're really running late. Okay, so I've got a linking book on me. I've got my emergency rations. I'm going to create a new descriptive book and just pop it down here. Uh, if you want to name your book after you've done so, it's real easy. Just take your uh, descriptive book, which is now named Age 3, and you can change it here to uh, Second Age. Cool? Nice. I got my first age. I got my second age. Let's see how cool this place is. All right, so traveling to a new age again. Double check you've got a linking book on your inventory, and let's go check it out. Dun dun dun. This is definitely a weird place. Oh boy. Nausea. One of the worst of the effects of an age. Ooh, I hate worlds with nausea on them. They are the worst. I don't even want to explore this world. I think I'm just going to ditch it. Uh, but you can see we got the, uh, the, the, um, the end star fields there so that is one of the options that you can have in an age you can have it look like the end which is pretty cool looking but i'm already getting a little trippy here so let's get out so nausea being in an age not cool gotta get out of there 
rough. So, like I said, lots of negative effects that can occur when you travel to different dimensions. Uh, don't worry, the nausea will eventually wear off in the overworld as soon as, uh, there we go, it's gone. Gonna go ahead and go to sleep now, and unfortunately, gotta wrap up episode 40. So, I got you guys a couple really nice pages. Uh, we're gonna store them, actually. Let me show you what to do with pages. There's a, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, remember, I put them in the uh, emergency supplies ender pouch, because I definitely did not want to lose that many pages. That's huge. Um, I'm actually going to create another notebook. So uh, I want to have a couple different notebooks in here. Notebooks can be used to store pages. And uh, what you do is simply right click it on your hotbar and you can place your pages in the notebook. Cool. And just like a book, you can name it. So for example, I'm going to name this notebook Biomes. And I'm going to store all the biome pages I find right here. It's real easy. Just uh, there's an ice mountains biome. There is a shrubland biome. There is a forest hills biome. Uh, there's a mountain taiga biome and a mountainous desert biome. Cool, nice. So these are all biomes, and uh, when I place them in my writing desk here, you can see uh, it's really easy. All we gotta do is put it in there, and now this is the notebook that's highlighted, and there's all those biomes. Now, uh, real quick, and explain how to deal with these notebooks before we wrap up. You can drag the pages out and use them to write, and you can drag them back in and put them in the notebook just like that, and you can middle click to sort. So you can sort it and make everything nice and easy. If you wanna make a copy of a page, you simply have to right click boom, and it'll create that page, the Forest Hills Biome. You'll note that it used a little bit of ink and it used a piece of paper here, but now we've got two copies of the Forest Hills Biome. Nice. Um, if we wanted, for example, the Shrubland Biome, we could also do that. So let's get Forest Hills out of here. I'm gonna just put that in the chest for now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, in this other notebook, uh, let's, let's, do we wanna make another notebook or how do we wanna do this? Probably don't need leather for books anymore, but we will need it for the uh, descriptive books. Uh, this one I'm going to call um, Celestial, and that's going to hold all the symbols for moons and stars and, and suns. So I'm going to put my, uh, oh, there's an unknown page in there. How did that happen? That was weird. I don't know how that happened, but I'm going to get rid of that unknown page because I think it's weird. Store it somewhere later. Uh, the normal sun page can go in there. And then, uh, you know, we can put that over here. Did I name you Celestial or something? Notebook. Uh, normal Sun. Cool. There we go. Just want to make sure that that worked out properly. Good. Normal Sun's still in there. All right. Now that's better. So we can put our Celestial Notebook here. And then finally, this notebook can just be um, locks. That's what I'll call him. Uh, just got to put him down here and do locks. Cool. Notebook full of blocks. And oh, look, I did that weird unknown page thing again, and it erased the blocks name. Maybe that's what that unknown page is about. I don't know. All right, seems to be behaving a second time. Gotta report that bug to XCOMP because that is pretty weird. Uh, but inside this guy is gonna be uh, the, the oak wood and the crystals. That's pretty cool. All right, so maybe we'll put biomes at the top. We'll put blocks here. Okay, that'll do. So for example, if I wanted to, I could make a copy of one of these pages. For example, uh, the shrubland biome, boom. And uh, now we've got a copy of the shrubland biome page. And is there anything else I'd like to have here? Oak wood, crystals, normal sun, eh. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put that shrubland biome into this book, the descriptive book. And we're gonna create our third age. And this should at least somewhere have shrublands. It might have other biomes as well, but one of the biomes in this age should be shrublands. Like I told you, I did not like second age. Uh, I think I'm gonna rename that to um, sick world number one. And uh, store that descriptive book in this chest. All right, definitely gotta get out of here. Time to wrap up the episode, but still traveling to the third age, uh, just to check out what we got. Oh. All right, so did I get a shrublands? I got four, oh yeah, the shrub pan, shrubland biome. Nice, so I did get a shrublands biome. Uh, what kind of age does this have? Uh, definitely some kind of negative side effect, hunger and weakness. Uh, I've had worse. All right, might explore this land a little bit too. Um, ooh, darn, I forgot a linking book home. 
Remember how I always said? See, that's what I get for Russian. That's why I have an emergency uh, escape kit. So let's get a uh, linking book out of here. Told you. Told you. Even before the end of the episode, after I yelled at you guys to remember linking books, I forgot one. Ha! All right. Well, I'm going to make a few more. Uh, you know, one can go replace the one that I had in my ender pouch here. Cool. All right, guys. Definitely got to wrap up. Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And take it easy. Don't forget world download.